money. That's why they all came. Oh! But over 5,000 players have been eliminated. The remaining 569, the payday they've been searching for is finally within yeah. reach. Somebody come and get me. Show me the money! The race for the money is on, yet the battle for the bracelet is just getting started. It's four more day grind. But in this day and age of poker, most every top pro will spend their entire career and never come close to the greatest title in poker. Do I expect to win in my lifetime? My head tells me no, but I have to believe it's doable or you might as well not play. Will this be Howard Letterer's year, or can another top pro take home the title? Many big names remain, and the once impossibly big field is now filled with possibilities. Yes, 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 yes! The money, yes! the bracelet, oh, yes! the main oh, event rolls oh, oh, oh. Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. You can feel the anticipation in the poker room as we are only a few players removed from making the money. Many top pros still in the hunt, including one very familiar face at the main event, Greg Raymer. He is one of many big names left in the field, but there are quite a few new names on the leaderboard. Here's a look at the degree chip count and look at number nine, defending champion Greg Raymer. Young James Pollock in second position, our chip leader, Rod Hardy Jr. But with 569 players left in this main event, it's still in. Anyone's game. Hello, everybody. Along with Norma Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Norma, I've got some good news and bad news. In a tournament that started with over 5,600 players, the good news is we're down to our final 569. The bad news, only 560. We'll finish in the money. Indeed, the race to the money is important to many players here, but to some, it's just a stepping stone to the ultimate goal. At our feature table sit Howard Letterer and Barbara Enright. Each has made it to the main event final table once. Neither has caught more than a whiff of it since. Tonight, each hopes to make a move toward a return engagement. There is the professor, Howard Letterer, in his 19th World Series. He's a force at any table he sits. Barbara Enright finished fifth in the main event 10 years ago. The only other woman to come close to a final table was Howard's sister, Annie Duke. She was 10th in the year 2000. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Barbara Enright shows Pocket Queens. Everybody here in this room fighting for the top prize in the main event of $7.5 million. Barbara raises this pot to 8,000. 560 plus players left right now. The average chip stack for each player would be about 100,000. Howard's sitting with about 128,000 chips right now and Pocket Sevens. I'm all in. And Howard is gonna re-raise to try to put Barbara Enright all in. And since we're this close to making the money, players often take a lot longer to make their decisions right now. Pocket Queens usually would call pretty quickly. Barbara's going to think about it. I call. And she will call. A player going out right now makes zero dollars, but players finishing in the money make a minimum of 12500 Barbara's Queens are strongest right now. She is in good shape, but again, she gets unlucky right here. Two or three straight days of playing all day long, you get nothing. She'd be out. Barbara played her first hand of poker. She says at age four, still going strong. Ace, five, ace, no help to Howard Letterer. Barbara still leads. Howard needs a lot of help real quick. Here is the turn card. Oh, it's oh, a yes. queen. That does it. Enright with a full house. She wins the hand. Howard Letterer drawing down a meaningless ten on the river. And Barbara Enright doubles up through Howard Letterer. Howard just never seems to run real well here at the main event. No, I said today I'm, when I got up, I'm not going to try to. I don't care about getting in the money. I want to. I'm going to win for the tournament. Yeah. If I go broke, I go broke. You know, it wouldn't be the first time. Her first ladies' championship came in 1986. They were playing seven card stud at that point. Of course, we're going to be keeping a close eye on the rest of the field. Once nine players go down, everybody's in the money. There's Mike Santoro eliminated, one down. Now over to David Silverman facing elimination. Ah! That is the call of the wild. He survived. I live. <laughs> he is no That's a this. bubble all in right there with tens. <laughs> Another player all in is Joseph Hasham with pocket threes. He flopped the set. He pushed all in against Champy Douglas, who called him. Hasham has the big lead, but his tournament life on, is on the line. Another big pot at our table. Turn card coming out. Yes! Hasham avoids no, trouble know. there. If Hashem can avoid an ace or an eight on the river, he'll win the hand and still have a shot to make the money. 
And it's a jack on the river, so Joseph Hashem put his tournament life on the line and lives to tell about it. Well, maybe if he makes the money, uh, he can buy a designer t-shirt like I wear. Back to our feature table, the blinds is one and 2,000, and still the tension very thick in this room, waiting for the last few players to go out before everybody will officially get a payday. Howard Letter with Ace Jack off suit. Howard doesn't think about the money. He thinks about analytical, intellectual things that nobody else thinks about at the table. <laughs> I can't read his mind. He'll come out with 6,000. John Smith folds over to uh, Eamon Grimes, first World Series, ace nine. I've done it many times. There's no shame in being the bubble boy. He's the short stack. <laughs> and the short stacks around the room are nursing them, hoping other people go out first. Damon will not play this hand, hoping someone goes out first. <laughs> Over to Steve Dannenman, a CPA and mortgage broker from Maryland. Also his first World Series. He's in the big blind. A lot of home game players love the concept of protecting your blind. When you got 8-6 unsuited, it's a stupid mentality. Cool. Well. <laughs> uh, it's 6-6 six, six tall. Six. Well, maybe he wants to take home a good story to the guys. You know, I went up against a great professor. Anyway, Danneman's in a lot of trouble right now. Gets the ace jack and the flop is king, queen, jack. Letterer flops, jacks, and a Broadway straight draw. And Danneman's looking at Howard as if he likes how he's dressed. Well, somebody likes those full tilt jerseys. Howard in command, though. Danneman checks over to Letterer. Howard with jacks, bets 7,500. It's the evil eye. Danneman's not shrinking. Re raise. Oh, he's going to re raise. With nothing. No, a creative play. Wow, he puts out six blue chips for 30,000 total. And you've mentioned before, Lon, the pros have a tough time dealing with players they've never seen before who come from every angle, and it's tough to read them in a hurry. Now we're trying to figure this one out. Oh, and he gives it up. Wow, he lays it down. Score one for the homeboys. So Steve Dannenman. Bluffs Howard Letterer out of that pot. Now he's got a good story to tell his home game. Not a huge hit to Howard, but any hit at this point could be dangerous. And at Howard on that one, Lon, I mean, he was done taking to the cleaners. He was washed, pressed, and folded. Looks like he's somebody shot his dog, man. He's been getting beat up so unreal. He's lost one third of his stack. Six eights. I pop him for 30. <laughs> Danneman couldn't wait to get away oh from the table God. to crow about his master stroke he just played on Howard. <laughs> the wonders of technology. And the news is actually worse for Howard. He's lost about half his stack today. The 2005 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by La Vitra. Ask your doctor about it today. La Vitra, when it counts. New degree for men with twice the protection you need. It won't let you down. At Harris Entertainment. Surviving two grueling days at the main event is little consolation when you bring home no cash for your efforts. We're down to 561 players. Only one more will go home empty hand. I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. $10,000 buy-in. Everybody gets 10,000 chips. Howard Letterer is a vegetarian, but he famously once ate a hamburger to win a $10,000 bet. <laughs> His chip stack, though, has been going in the wrong direction so far today. He's got pocket sixes. And he is going to raise it up to 6,000. Next to act, Eamon Grimes, the short stack. He Declined to play last time. He wanted to make the money. Now with Ace Queen. The shop the owner from Northern oh. Ireland is going to make the call. Grimes only has 600 chips left. You, you really can't save them for another tournament. Surprised he didn't put them in. <laughs> Dark bet. Well, Howard's going to make him put them in right now. And he Grimes calls it dark, so he's all in, and we will see the flop. And now the flop comes. Deuce, ace, three. Grimes pairs his ace. They hadn't shown their cards yet, and now Grimes shows Howard that he's gone ahead with his pair of aces. And so Grimes is all in. 
If he does get unlucky, he'll be knocked out without any money. Nothing for Howard on the turn. It's a jack. Grimes safe at the moment. Letterer would need a six on the river to send Grimes home as the bubble boy. And it's a deuce on the river. Grimes survives his all in. He just might make the money. Steve Danneman from across the table gives him a little uh, distant high five. That's a bank of Howard giving good returns so far at this featured table. Enright, Danneman, and now Grimes taking money from the professor. All right, let's switch our focus to the outer tables. Another player all in. It is Mike the Mouth Matisau. He's got a pair of aces after the flop. He moved all in, called by Graham Harrison, who needs just a club to fill up his flush. Harrison, of course, from Scotland, so Norman, I'm automatically rooting for him. Harrison, a professional gambler, has put Matisau on the edge. Harrison hits a club here on the turn of the river, and that's a one in three chance. He sends Matisau out of here. Matisau out of here as our bubble boy. So Matisau in the lead, going to the turn. It's a king. Matisau with aces up now. Matisau started the day with 120,000 chips. A lot of people would have sat on it to make the money. He's trying to win this thing, but his day could be over. If there's a club on the river, Matisau is out of here. It's a queen yes! of spades, and Matisau doubles yes, his chip stack and stays in it. Harrison takes a big hit to his stack. You chips. You wanted me bad. You had to call that re-raise with that jack seven. Hi. Yeah, that's why I talk because you will come on coming after me. And what happens when you come after me? You go right to school. This is the new Mike, same as the old Mike. And the mouth will be around a little while longer to abuse more players. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, there's Carl Yaborn. He is all in, and he's trailing Corey Cheresnik. Corey leads with a straight. If Yaborn is eliminated, we have our bubble boy, which means everyone else finishes in the money. And that is exactly what happens, and it's payday for the 560 remaining players here at the Rio. The board came all the way from three. Long way to come to go away with nothing. Hopefully this couple will get there. Now watch the Rio break by work its magic. Yeah. <laughs> With a I'm short sack celebrating. I'm all in. Look at him, he's got no chips, but $12,500 he's got. The board is the hero of the hour now. Hey, man. Short stack survivor who's 12,500 for the good. <laughs> Happy hour came early to Vegas today. The gym, the gym. Are. <laughs> I made it. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. Main event. Celebration still going on here at the Poker Pavilion at the Rio. Ma, yeah, I just made the money. <laughs> oh, I got him, got him. <laughs> Word spreading around the world, Norman. I made it. Joe Stillman sending the news back home. What are you so scared about? I, what are you, you really think I was in danger? That's how he talks to his mother? Yeah, too. Yeah. We're in the money, brother. Janneman's uh, still on the phone. Dave's still in. And Harris has told us that Bubble Boy Carl Yaborn will receive free entry to next year's main event. Nice gesture. <laughs> Maybe nobody in this room is more thrilled than young James Pollock, who could barely afford the $25 satellite tournament that helped him earn his way here. And now Pollock finds himself among the tournament chip leaders. Three months ago, I was just a college kid. I just graduated from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I have the uh, receipt from my ATM transaction at the end of my college year. I had $7 in my bank account. That's all I had. Never would I think at 22 that I'd be playing in the World Series of Poker. It's insane. It doesn't even seem real. Seeing all these guys in person was like a dream come true. At the beginning, I mean, I was shaking. I was so intimidated by all these guys because they just have that presence about them. I actually won two of the first three pots and that calmed my nerves. I can't imagine if a regular college Joe like me won instead of the next Chris Moneymaker. Every college kid in the world would probably be playing, trying to be the next James Pollock. Well, James told us the player he would least like to face at a poker table is right there, Phil Ivey. <laughs> and the two did end up playing next to each other during day two, and they seem to have become fast friends. 
Another young amateur player is Adam Friedman, who's got a good chip stack, playing next to his idol, Sammy Farha. This is what the World Series is all about. That's the wonderful nature of this beast. First you watch a guy on TV idolize, then you sit down next to him at the poker table, and you try to beat him. Going for that draw. Sammy looks like he didn't want to release those chips. Friedman threw in a big bet before the river, and Sammy called it. Now Friedman reaching for more chips. He throws it in. Action on Sammy. Sammy's going to release his cards now. Sammy did not see what he liked on the river, and so Friedman will take that hand from his idol, Sammy Farma. Like a little eager throw on a fastball by uh, Perry Bond. I'm sorry. I have an ace. Two pair. Sammy's not big on chit chat after he loses. I'll I'll give him a bond. Wow. Friedman is thrilled, though. He's going to take in some chips from Sam Farma. Right, hold on one second. And Friedman going over to whisper to his dad, actually, what he held in the pocket. And on another table, we've got a big hand between three-time bracelet winner John Juwanda and single bracelet winner Paul Darden. Darden has three aces against the pocket queens of Juwanda, and Darden has bet 50,000 to Juwanda. Tough spot for Juwanda. He'd have to commit about 40% of his chips to call this. I, I go on. And John Buddy. is going to do that and on. more. Oh, that's even worse news for Juwanda. Oh, oh. Call. He got an ace. Oh, 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 a serious misstep for John Juwanda. He's in for all his chips now, and he's down to his last card of this tournament. He's going to need a queen here on the river line where John Juwanda's going home. Darden in a strong position now with a river card to come. And now the river card. Oh, it's a wow. queen, the perfect card for Juwanda. A winning full house. And a refreshing sip of tea for Juwanda. I hate to bring up Mike Mattis out here, Lon, but I will. You're watching two pros react to opposite extremes of a big hand. My hat's off to both of them. Darden's nickname is the truth, and the truth is Juwanda just sucked out on him and got a lot of chips. Going back to our feature table now where the blinds have increased to 12 and 2,400. Howard Letterer has taken a beating so far today at this table, queen four of hearts. Reaching again for chips. He's going to raise it up now to 7,200. Over to John Smith, an attorney in his first World Series of Poker from La Palma, California. Queen Jack of Diamonds. You waiting for a judgment from a judge? Raise. He's going to raise it up. 18.5 total. I mean, Howard will have to commit more chips if he wants to stay in the pot. And he doesn't look happy about it. It's like Howard's thinking, who are these people? I got um, 33,000 in case you're wondering. Howard's wondering something. Now, I will say this, the letterer you know, has a somewhat marginal hand line, and I'm being polite, he is the professor. He's thinking seriously about it. Call. Howard makes the call. Wow. For Howard, that's a loose call. Two to the flop. It comes queen, ace, deuce, couple of diamonds. Both pair their queen, but letter is dominated. Smith in terrific position. He's got his pair of queens with a better kicker, and he's got the diamond draw. Howard Letterer checks. That's an easy, easy decision. John Smith says, no problem. I am going all in. 33,000 more chips in the pot. Howard's radar was off when he folded the best hand against Steve Daneman. Let's see if the radar is fixed and he correctly folds this hand. You know any good Hawaiian music? Do you know any good Hawaiian music? Uh, I assume Howard will pick up on that tell. I know what it is. Pretty big pot size, over 77,000. The average stack just over 100,000 now. This means a lot to both players. Who are these people? <laughs> Howard's giving it up. Take it, sir. At the moment, Howard doesn't seem to be in his happy place. Yes! John Smith, another newcomer, wins a showdown <laughs> with Howard Letterer. It's been that kind of tournament for Howard. That's what I've been up against for three days. If I ever put a chip in the pot, they like make me defend for my whole stack, like every hand. But if I, you know, make some pairs. Right. 
I can grow these chips fast. This yeah. is the new World Series of Poker. The top pros are going to have to learn to play with the new yeah. breed. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Pavilion. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad. Everybody here still playing. We'll finish in the money. The last one standing takes home seven and a half million dollars. How much? Seven and a half million. I got stuff to say. Howard Letterer seemingly has a bounty on his head here at the feature table, but he's got pocket aces. He's got something to fire back with. And Howard, once again, is going to raise it up, as has been his practice. 7,200 chips. To John Smith. Howard fell victim to Smith a short time ago. 10-9 of diamonds. Now Smith eyeing Howard's chips. It's mostly black. Ruefully, Howard says, because the black chips are worth only 100. Yeah, maybe it's third. Maybe it's 38 total. No. Smith will give it up. Now we'll see who wants to take their shot at Howard this time around. Over once again to Steve Dannenman. He's in the big blind. Dannenman looks a king five of hearts and has been raised. As I said, he's in the big blind, and Lon, sometimes amateurs love to talk about defending the blind. It's, it's bad to think that way. It makes you play hands you otherwise wouldn't play. The blind is no longer your money, it's in the pot. Cool. Daneman once again is going to go up against Howard Letterer. Well, if he beats Howard out of this pot, I think there'll be a party line on that cell phone coming. <laughs> Howard Letterer putting on a little acting job there with his aces. Deuce five, deuce one heart. Daneman pairs his five, but he's still in trouble. He did get part of that flop, fives and deuces. All in. Oh. I call. An automatic call from Howard Letterer. Letterer will be all in. Daneman has him covered. I see. Okay, this is the situation Howard was just speaking of. He picks up a big pair. He's in command of the hand, and he gets somebody to call him down. Howard with a big lead with his aces. Turn card is a jack. No help for Steve Dannenman. Well, Howard does get up. He is all in. Dannenman can still knock him out on the river with a five. And now the river card. It's a jack. Pocket aces at the right time for Howard Letterer. Hold up. Howard gets the chip back. He sent to Dannenman earlier. I don't see Dannenman on the cell phone now. Hey, I just uh, pushed Howard all in when he was a six to one favorite. <laughs> Nice hand, Howard. Howard doubles up, back on track here, one step closer to that increasingly tough to reach main event final table. My first main event of the World Series of Poker was in 87, and I've played every year since. 87 was amazing. 163 people started, and I somehow found myself at the final table. I finished fifth. Well, I was extremely disappointed. I, I had a chance to win, and I, I was playing well. But I figured I would have many chances. When I say many, three or four more chances to win. I wasn't thinking I'd have to wade my way through 6,000 people, you know, 20 years later to try and get back to a final table. Times have changed. I try and be pretty reasonable about my chances. If I have one more crack at a final table, that would be pretty good. I don't care how many people are playing. You can always give yourself one more chance. Always frustration in the main event for Howard after he made the final table in 87. He then went 15 straight years without cashing in this event, finished 19th in 2003, and now he's got to hurdle these big fields. Norman, I'm told our field reporter has an important update right now. That's it. We're here live on day three, and Mike the Mouth Mattisau has just got a hold of half a million dollars in chips. That's right, half a million. As they just consistently try their hardest to just give them away to me. What does this mean? Only God knows. Did we pay him for that? We're Shauna Hyatt when you need him. <laughs> Meanwhile, one of the outer tables is Lane Flack. Flack's still got a lot of chips, but most of his larger denomination chips have been melted away. He loses another big pot there. Well, Lane wishes he could turn his black chips into blue chips at the cashier's cage. Of course, Lane started day one very ill, recovered, and played very well after that. Joe Stillman currently all in at one of the other tables. He came here for a bowling tournament, won a satellite. I'll have all day, just fall. He does have all day. Where's he got? <laughs> Has he got an appointment somewhere else? He's a bowler. 
<laughs> you know, I know you fold me. You do? He's trying to goat me. All right, I fold. All right, well, he taunts Ooh. his opponent into folding. Stillman takes the hand. He's become quite a player in this main event. I want to read the but he needs to improve his table manners. He is quite chatty at the poker table. A much quieter player is Rod Party Jr. He was our chip leader starting the day. And Norman, it looks like he wants to be the chip leader the rest of his life with that stack. There are other players vying for the chip lead. One of them is Brad Kondracki, young law student out of Penn. Brad has put out a huge bet with a set of fives after the flop against Kelly Kim, who's holding pocket queens. Kim is considering a call that would put him all in. Kondraki got his undergraduate degree at Cornell, now, of course, at Penn Law. I guess I'm supposed to be impressed. If Kim didn't go to an Ivy League school, I'm rooting for him. <laughs> These two players very evenly matched the chips, but Kondraki's got Kim covered. And Kim oh, will make oh, the pot. This will be the biggest pot of the main event so far. And this is our degree all-in moment. Show the cards, come on. And neither wants to show the other the cards. Kim really doesn't want to see it. He sees he's far, far behind in this hand. Kelly Kim with just pocket queens to the three fives of Brad Kondracki. Yes. Now the turn card quad fives for Kondracki. He earns the degree check mark, winning the hand. Kim is drawing oh, Come on! Oh, I look at that river that. guard. Oh, he's right. upset because he made it. Oh, Queens it's, it's meaningless. But Brad Kondracki wins a 600,000 chip pot. Biggest name of the How much has he got? And I think Kelly's Kim's got to pay for the day. But Kim has been eliminated in 398th place. I hit a queen on the river, man. Kim unhappy. 398th place doesn't sound that impressive. But 398 is pretty good out of 5,619 players. And in a flash, young Brad Kondracki is suddenly among the chip leaders. The Toyota Points Leader is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction, as long as it's forward. Toyota, moving forward. With a very successful 2005 World Series, Alan Cunningham sits atop the Toyota Player of the Year standings. All of these 10 players have been knocked out, which means there are a few players left in the main event that could overtake Cunningham and win that honor. One of those people right there, Phil Ooh. Ivey, still in the hunt to win that all-round title. From the looks of his chip stack, Norman, he is very serious about it this year. Book it. He's going to win it. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Oh, look, and he almost smiled there. Although he might have just been thinking about a four-iron he hit that didn't end up in the water. He lays out a bet. Everybody else falls. Phil takes the pot. And that has been the norm here in 2005. Greg Raymer making Everyone a run has. at a most impressive feat, winning back-to-back -back titles. He started the day in ninth place in total chips, still climbing. Does he ever lose a pot? I have to bow to his greatness. Lon, he's just survived 90% of this field. After winning this thing last year, it's, it's not possible to really well. Those are some tough hands. And not just Thank standing, Norman. He is amassing a huge pile of chips, very reminiscent of last year when he won the main event. 2002 main event winner Robert Varconi still watching his wife Olga Varconi and probably still alive in this tournament. Robert taught Olga originally how to play stud and then when all the money switched to Holden, he taught her how to play Holden. Yeah, baby. He says Olga was a key ingredient to his 2002 win. Right now trying to pay that favor back to her. When Robert won the main event, he said none of his friends believed him. He told him just go online, you'll see, or just call Binions directly and they'll tell you. Much quieter right now in the poker room than it was a few days ago when the main event began with almost 6,000 players. In this edition of The Nuts, we look at the symphony of sights and sounds that is the main event. Oh, yes! Yeah. Woo! 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 Yes! Yes, sir! <sighs> we can't do it. Come on, baby. What's up? Come on. Woo! Yes, Woo! Yeah! I'm all in, baby. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah! Rock and roll, baby. I'm live and kicking, baby. Oh, baby. 
might want to shut up. I can't believe this is the World Series of Poker. This freaking donkey stuff. Oh, my. Oh, my. Ooh, that's a 20 minute penalty. <laughs> honey, honey, I was supposed to go broke on that hand, honey. Except I forgot one thing. I can dodge bullets, baby. Oh! Oh! This game is so easy. They forgot one thing. I can dodge bullets, baby. Might be one of my favorite sound bites of all time. Phil Hellmuth completes me. <laughs> As the field shrinks in the main event, players are moved around. Howard Leonard remains at this featured table. Barbara Enright has moved to the outer tables. Joe Beavers, Euro poker star extraordinaire, has joined this table. And we've also got a newcomer here, Dan Groleman from Warren, Pennsylvania. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, he's got a couple of diamonds, King Jack. Roman just Raise. took up the game 16 months ago. He raises it to 15,000. Howard started playing <laughs> poker at the legendary Mayfair Club in New York City nearly 20 years ago. That's where he met Dan Harrington and Eric Seidel. Him and Harrington went to the main event in 87. Both finished on the final table. And then Howard convinced Seidel to go to the next year, and Seidel finished second to Johnny Chan. Yeah, it's all common knowledge. Howard with pocket nines will make the call. Beavers gets out of the way. Grohlman and Howard Letterer, pretty much a coin flip, going to the flop, heads up. And the flop. 6-3, three, three, one diamond. Letterer's nines are still best. Howard now a three to one favorite. That flop can't scare Howard too much. Grohlman first to act. He throws out four blue chips worth 5,000 each. That's 20,000 to Howard. Grohlman just on a bluff. Howard's thinking, who are these people? <laughs> Howard going to come right back. He's got the best hand, makes the call. So to the turn, it's another nine. Howard with a full house, earns him the check mark. Grohlman again, first to act. All in. Wow. I call. <laughs> Howard makes the call. Roman is now drawing dead going to the river. He was trying to push Howard all in, hoping Howard didn't have much of a hand and wouldn't call. I got to tell you a lot, we, we have seen so much unusual and erratic play here at this main event. It's a, it's a different quality of poker. The pros like Matisau and Lederer just walk as carefully as they can and hope they don't step into a pothole. Howard maybe has figured out these rookies. He doubles up through Grohlman. <laughs> Howard Letterer now with almost 400,000 chips. It was a struggle oh, earlier in the day for Letterer, but now he's in a position to struggle. That's some damage. Put sixes. That smile from Howard, the equivalent of a young gun doing backflips. The turn card came with Deuce. Would you have still called? That's a good question. Do you know the answer? Obviously, I suspected something. I mean, I called 20, but it might be tough to. Call 150 with two nines. Yeah, it's good. But, bad, but it's got three nine there was something working for me in terms of calling. Beavers and Letterer discussing some advanced poker yeah. theory. Two of the brightest minds sharing some thoughts. At the outer tables, Barbara Enright having some troubles getting short on chips now. She'll fold that in. Barbara not having any fun right now. And she looks as if she's waiting for somebody to bring her more chips. That's not going to happen. A few tables away, Sam Farha I don't know. is I don't holding know. ace queen. He is all in after the flop. Yeah, I'm he's happy. I don't the pocket queen yeah. to Philip yeah. Long. Sam is about to be out of all of his chips. Big okay, underdog. Guys. Let me see how much you got. Oh boy, you're in trouble. You don't want to see my hand? Yeah, show that. You know, he's in trouble. He can hit no queens, right? So I'm favored. There's three aces left. No, Sam is a five to one dog. Not in his mind. Hard heart would be nice. Looking for hearts. And now the turn card is a seven of hearts. Sammy picks up a heart draw. What a nice one. He can stay alive with an ace or a heart. Oh, jack of hearts. Nine loves coming back. Farha steals the pot with a heart flush on the river. Okay, buddy. Now you're in danger. You know that. You're in danger right now. Fasten your seat, though. Went up. Two more hands, I'll be chipping you. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event.
We've got about 240 players left in the main event, and Olga Varconi has pushed her last 200,000 chips into the pot. She's all in with Ace King against Bart Rice, who has called her down with Ace Eight of Diamonds. Olga, as her husband Robert looks on, a good position, dominating Rice with the better kicker. What a run it has been for Olga here in her first World Series of Poker, and now our flop. It is 4-6-3 Rainbow. Rice gets a little help. And Barconi's position is improved. She's now a 4-1 favorite. Turn card is an 8, and that turns the tables. Rice pairs his 8, and now with a big advantage. Oh, and Olga Varconi now knows her tournament might be over. She needs a king on the river, or her main event is done. Wow, just like that. And now the river is a jack of clubs. Rice wins the hand. And in a flash, Olga Varconi's dream of winning the big one in her first attempt is gone. Husband Robert won. He won the main event. Best of the field of 631 three years ago. She just outlasted nearly 5,400 players, if it's any consolation. Now back to our featured table, where the main attraction has been Howard Letterer. And Howard Chipstack is uh, looking a little better than it has in quite some time. He looks at ace three in the hole, and he gives it up. Over to Joe Beavers. He's found success in Europe, but he's never made a World Series of Poker final table. Pocket fours. He did have his best uh, cash finish ever in the WPT Championship a couple of months ago. Won nearly $200,000, finishing seven. Joe raises it up to 12,000 chips. Action over to Dan Grohlman. Ace king. Off safe. This rookie loves to see that. Roman gave away a lot of his chips to Howard Letterer just a little while ago. Holland. Well, Holland. he's looking to either double up or give them all away right now. Five. Poker players have a lot of okay. different nicknames for a lot of different hands. There's a new nickname for Ace King. They're calling it the Anna Kornikova because it looks good, but it never wins. <laughs> well, Grohlman hoping to break that streak. Joe Beavers. We'll make the call. It cost him a little over 45,000 more chips. So, Grohlman all in. Beavers with the lead with his pocket fours. And Grohlman not happy now with Ace King. He sees he's on the short end of what will be a coin flip. Beavers trying to pad his chip stack here. <laughs> I can't believe he called it. Why shouldn't a Beavers call? He had a pocket pair, good pot odds. Now the flop. Six, Jack, seven, all diamonds. Beavers immediately has a diamond draw to his fours. That closes some options for Grohlman to win this hand. Now the turn card. Jack of clubs pairs the board. That gives Grohlman actually more options now. He can stay alive on the river with a six or a seven or a non-diamond ace for a king. River card's a queen of hearts, and Joe yeah, Beavers man. wins the hand. Dan Grohlman can now join on, Anna Kornikova on the sidelines. That'll take him up $34,000 in his first oh. World Series, and Joe Beavers is not a player you want to see with a lot of chips. He's a poker TV mainstay in Europe, but he's yet to win a televised tournament. Those two fours? Remind me not to try and make you lay anything down. You wouldn't have called with two fours? What? It's 35,000 in the middle, it's 44,000 more. a million years ago. Yeah. I might, I might have called, but you know, I'm allowed to at least seem surprised. I don't want to speak for the professor, but I've seen Howard's instructional DVD, and I believe he would have called in that spot. All right, I mean, so Joe Beaver yeah, gets a little yeah, stronger yeah. here at the feature table. Meanwhile, on the outer tables, more friendly chatter always happens when Greg Raymer comes to the table, and certainly when he comes to the table of Mike Madison. How are you, Borden? Are you coming over here? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Now there's only like seven million in chips at this table. Oh my lord, Almighty! They need a bigger table to accommodate all the chips and egos. I'm too tired for this. So Matisau and Raymer find themselves again in a familiar position. All of the stars aligning for maybe a rematch of one of last year's greatest confrontations. Mike Matisau, Greg Raymer, it was one for the ages. We got big cojones. We got little cojones. I just basically told them, I got some baby. You're playing with a player now. You gotta stop me, buddy. I'm gonna bust you if you me. Matisau taunting Raymer here. Mike is a guy who will try to get under your skin, and he will try to throw you off your game. You ain't playing with kids, buddy. I got <laughs> steel. Steel. Just came over. I played it up a little bit, probably more than it was for TV, you know, but uh, I was just trying to get a little into his head. Just joking. <laughs>
Uh oh. No, I was just trying to ignore Mike at that point. Raymer just scribbled in his notebook. Seat number one is a jerk. He, he never relented. He just kept wanting to come after me. All in. Told you I was going to bust you. He came after me, didn't I? Call. No! No! Yeah! Without a doubt, there were other critical pots that I won. But after his tirade earlier that day, it was going to feel a little better to win a big pot from Mike than it was from anyone else. Thank you for busting me, Mike. We're friends. We get along now. And I respect the man a lot. They're not friends, and he doesn't respect them a lot, trust me. And I guarantee you, Fossil Man does not put out the welcome mat to the mouth on Thanksgiving. Can we play an extra hour? Raymer would play all night if you let him. Come on, Greg's got a lot of chips of mine. Well, just like last year, Raymer will remain silent and let his chips do the talking. The 2005 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, brewed for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's forward. Toyota, moving forward. And Harris Entertainment, home of the world's richest poker tournament. Coming near the end of the day here at the Rio as main event day number three winds down. Mattis Howard Raymer threatening still to <laughs> go at it here at the outer tables. Well, it's easy to be quiet till Greg comes. When Greg comes, you gotta just liven up a little. It's not every day you get to play with the world champion. By the way, Fossil Man was not writing down anything about Mattisau last year. He would simply keep track of his chip count at the end of each level. I feel privileged. But he could have written, the mouth is a jerk. <laughs> and he could say, Redux 2005. Hi. <laughs> All right. Let's head over to one of the other outer tables where we see Shane Bartholomew all in with a nut flush against Adam Friedman. We saw Friedman playing next to Sammy Farha earlier. He holds the second nut flush, considering calling the all in with all the cards having been dealt. God, you hate to be in Adam Friedman's shoes right now. He has yeah. second nut flush, as you mentioned, and only one hand beats him. He's got to decide whether he's going to call this all in. It would cost Friedman almost 192,000 of his chips. I call. He makes the call. Bartholomew turns over the nut flush. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow, what a blow to Adam Friedman. He is overcome with grief. He makes the call. He can make one bad mistake. It's a horrible play. Oh, Death King, didn't you? Yeah, no. Friedman's beating himself up unnecessarily. I played perfect for three days. Uh, I doubt he played perfect for three days, but even if he did, so he made a bad play right there. And I don't know how he's supposed to know that the other guy has the only hand that can beat him. Yeah. Um, yeah. so good for three days. What a hand for Bartholomew to get the ace of hearts. Back now to our feature tape with eight players. Short stack is Eric Mayfune from Sao Paulo, Brazil. We, we're seen in Brazil? They see us on Pluto. Great cable system there. <laughs> Mayfune with ace queen offsuit. Not a lot of chips to play with, as you see. He is going to raise it up to 16,000. Joe Beavers gives it up. The rest of the table says no thanks. Over to Howard Letterer been very active here today on a roller coaster ride. He has pocket sixes in the big blind. It's hard to believe looking at him now, Juan, but when Howard first started playing poker in New York 20 years ago, he went broke and he'd sleep in Washington Square Park in Greenwich Village during the day, then go play poker at night. Wow, there is no easy road to success. So Howard makes the call. Mayfune and Letterer to the flop. It comes out 3-3-9. Three, three, Howard's sixes survive. Howard will be first to act. And he will check it over to Mayfune. And Mayfune is going all in. Lon, Lon, I am convinced people just like saying all in. <laughs> Personally, I prefer saying Geronimo. But, but, but we've seen some of these guys put the rest of their chips in on a bluff. And guys like Howard and Mike the Mouth are going to pick them off most of the time. 
Howard does put the chips into the pot and makes the call. So May Pune in big trouble now, a three to one dog, all his chips in the pot, and halfway out the door. And when you go all in with that hand, you should be halfway out the door. Now the turn card. Five of clubs, no help to May Fune. May Fune possibly down to his last card. He needs an ace or queen on the river to stay alive. It's an eight, a blank to May Fune. <coughs> wins the hand. Eric, Eric May Fune eliminated from the main event at Twitter, 25th place. So what a roller coaster day for Howard. He started out, got down, and now he's got some chips very much in the hunt to make it back to his first main event final table in 18 years. Many other top pros are still in the mix. Yes! Another top pro, Sam Carlaw, has been sent home early, and Lane Black fought back against sickness, but he could not stave off elimination. Barbara and Olga are out, yet four women are still in position to make history. Steve Ganneman has yet another reason to phone home as he makes it through another session. The young guns continue to impress, yes. many of them among the chip leaders, but perhaps the most impressive performance of all was Greg Ramers. Are you coming over here? He survived his run-in with Mattisau, his chip stack continued to thrive, and Raymer is now inconceivably our chip leader. For Norman Chad, I'm Juan McCarran. See you next time from the main Woo! event of the world.